Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today we have a question from my friend Mark over at Superhuman Fitness. Go check out his channel, link in the description below. Mark and I did a podcast. Super interesting guy. Mark, if you're watching, I'd love to do it again. You should be watching because I'm answering your question. So, Mark is way into fitness, way into strength training, all of this stuff. He's done martial arts and wrestling, but he's fairly new to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu which is what he has a question about. He says this, what is a good amount of strength to use while still using technique? I've only been doing BJJ for a few months, but it seems that every time I roll, people say that I'm strong. And from my knowledge, that is not a compliment when it comes to BJJ, as it means I use strength over technique. I try not to be spazzy, and relax and think, but if I can use my strength to hold someone's wrist, for example, I do it. Am I wrong for this? Oh man, Mark, the most back-handed compliment in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Dude, you're so strong, which is usually thrown out there after a guy who has more experience than you, a guy who's probably more technical than you, is not able to beat you because you're just too strong. And there's this beautiful lie in martial arts, all martial arts, not just jujitsu, that, that the purpose of martial arts is to al allow a smaller, weaker fighter to beat a bigger, stronger fighter. And I'm not saying that can't happen and that doesn't happen and that isn't the purpose. It's just that the lie part comes when we think that we don't have to work for it, which obviously isn't true. Okay. Now, sometimes that's thrown out there because of pride. Somebody who is weaker than you shaking their fist, at least in their mind and in their heart, thinking, oh man, Mark, if you weren't such a beast, I'd, I would have caught you with that choke or whatever. And it might be a very well-meaning instructor telling you, hey, you don't actually need to exert a metric ton of force to make this technique work. All you need to do is lean on the guy, put your shoulder there, get a little weight on it, and you're good. Okay? So context is everything. Now, how much force should you use as much as you need to? Now, obviously, if, if your coach is giving you some pointers, pay attention, especially to that. A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between a teacher and a coach? Well, a teacher teaches. An instructor instructs. A coach is somebody different because that is a person who has a vested interest in seeing you win. Somebody who is heavily invested in your success. Now, I'm not saying teachers can't be heavily in invested in your success, but... Does a teacher go with you to the emergency room after a fight to get your fates stitched back together? Not necessarily. Anyway, that's a big aside. That's a whole other video. Remember that technique is not a lack of strength. It's not a lack of power. It's not a dearth of any of those things. Good technique is an efficient use of strength and power. Bad technique is an inefficient use of strength and power. So if you are wasting energy, if you're grabbing on and squeezing for dear life and you're uh, wearing out your arms and not improving your position, not working toward finishing the match, that's not an efficient use of strength and power. So it's poor technique. If the only thing stopping you from finishing a fight is flexing your muscles a little bit, then by all means do it. But I'll go a step further. When I roll with a new student or I spar with a new student, really, when I roll or spar with anybody, generally, unless I'm getting really competitive, generally, if it's a non-competitive sort of thing, I will go as light as possible. Like I'm trying to roll with a small child. How would you, how would you roll with a small child? 
I practice jujitsu with my seven-year-old daughter all the time, and I've been doing that since she was four years old. How would you roll with a four-year-old? Very gently, right? And so you kind of have to think of your training partners sometimes as really big babies. Especially if you're a big athletic guy, and you are. You're a strong guy, man. And so a lot of these people who've never had the experience of rolling with an adult human male in peak physical condition will be shocked and surprised and their pride will get hurt. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. They need to have that experience. They need to know what it's like rolling with somebody who is feral, if you will. Somebody who is, who has beastly strength. As a lot of people do, man. Well, not a lot, but you know, enough people do that it is going to be a problem at some point in your grappling career. I had a student once who was a huge, strong guy, just massive, massive strongman type of strength. And he was so strong he could just bench press everybody off of him, you know, curl everybody with one arm when they were trying to arm bar him, just do ridiculous things with his strength. And he had a tournament, and he went to this tournament, and there was a big dude who was bigger than him in the heavyweight division. And they rolled, and he lost, and it was like his first defeat because this guy was actually stronger than him and 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 it it kind of shook him and he came back to the gym more more humble more teachable than before and that was a really interesting experience and so uh, again he was like way bigger than everybody in the gym and so I started giving him challenges like okay I want you to catch this guy with a triangle choke catch everyone with a triangle choke today and so, you know, instead of just muscling into whatever weird position he could get to, he got really focused. And because he got really focused, he started learning, okay, this is how I do the triangle choke. This is how I set it up. And another day, all right, no submissions. All I want you to do is work on this particular sweep. And then he'd, you know, start working that particular sweep or whatever. And I'd always give him, like, just little challenges. And then he started giving himself little challenges, like, okay, today... I'm just going to play guard. Today, I'm going to work on, you know, whatever. So give yourself little challenges like that, especially if you find um, that you're crushing everybody. If you're not, if they're crushing you, do what you have to do, man. As long as you're not injuring your training partners and holding back your learning process. Because again, my big strong friend, you know, he held himself back quite a bit by relying so much on his strength. And I kind of hate to say that because I'm a huge advocate of strength training for martial arts, especially jujitsu. Because there are way too many jujitsu guys. Not all. Because again, some are great athletes, but I would say a, the larger percentage of jujitsu guys are terrible athletes. And they are nowhere near their physical potential. And if they would squat and deadlift and do pull ups and Basic stuff like that. Man, their, their grappling game would skyrocket. Because when you have a solid understanding of technique, and then you have athleticism behind that, that amplifies your technique. It doesn't replace it. That's, that's a really important thing to understand. Strength does not replace technique. Athleticism does not replace technique. It amplifies it. It augments it. But at the same time, good strength training technique can teach you a whole lot about principles of leverage, principles of movement, principles of kinesthetic bodily intelligence that translate perfectly into grappling in so many ways. So, in short, treat everybody like a big baby for a while. And then you'll start getting some ideas about when you need to, you know, flex the muscles a little bit more and when you can relax. Keep breathing. I can't stress that enough. Keep breathing. Because if you ever stop breathing, you know, we tend to tense up a lot more, tire out more. Squeeze harder than we need to. And, of course, get our training partners starting to say, oh, you're too strong. And to those of you who are thinking, 
yeah, my training partner's like that. He's too strong. He uses his strength too much. He's, he's a better athlete than me, and I, I want him to be at my level. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves and be grateful for those big, strong guys who give you a very unique challenge in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that you wouldn't get from anybody else. Man, if you get into an MMA fight, one of the big differences between an MMA fight and a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu match is how strong your opponent feels. Not how strong they actually are, but how strong they feel. Because when you are hyped up on the type of adrenaline and performance anxiety that exists in a cage fight, which is at a whole different level than, say, you know, a jiu-jitsu tournament, which for a lot of people is still quite a lot. <sighs> Man, some people just seem to have crazy monkey strength that they have no right having. <laughs> and it is a whole different level of exhaustion that can happen under those circumstances. And so again, as a coach, one of the most common things that I hear when a fighter comes back to the corner is complaining about how strong the other guy feels. Not his technique, not like, oh man, his, his De La Hiva guard is so good. No, man, no. What they're saying is, that guy over there is beastly strong. He is so flipping strong. What do I do? So if you plan on transitioning from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to MMA, be thankful for those strong, athletic brutes that you train with. And if you are the strong, athletic brute, just make sure, you know, put the kid gloves on, if you will, figuratively. Treat your partners, you know, like big babies. And make sure you're not injuring anybody. And that can teach you a lot. And of course, that, that thing I gave my... My large, strong, strongman friend, give yourself very specific goals every time you roll, every time you train. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out Mark's channel. Again, link in the description. Now get out there and train.